Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. This video is going to be going over the inner ear model. So I'm going to slide this a little forward so it's a little closer to us. This is a magnified version of the inner ear. If you're trying to follow along on our list of things to know, we are going to be working on some structures that are on page 7. Okay, so as we go over the inner ear, there's some structures that you should know. This area here is called the cochlea, looks like a snail shell. This middle section here, I'm going to tilt the model a little bit. This middle section here is called the uh, vestibule. And then you have the three semicircular canals. The three semicircular canals, if we're looking at this from an anterior view, this would be called the anterior semicircular canal. This one that comes forward here. This one that's lying on its side would be the lateral semicircular canal. And this one back here would be the posterior semicircular canal. Where each of the semicircular canals joins the vestibule over here, there's this enlarged area. Each one of these enlarged areas here, there's one here for the lateral semicircular canal, and there's one on the back side here. This is kind of a swollen area. Those are each called an ampulla. So we see an ampulla there, and we see two more ampullae here and here. That's where some of the um, receptors are for our rotational motion. So now, um, if you look at the model, you notice there's a white outer covering. And if I twist it a little bit more this way, you notice that the covering, the white part, has been cut and a piece has been removed. This white outer covering over the whole model is actually a piece of bone. It's a thin piece of bone, almost like an eggshell, called the bony labyrinth. All right? So all of the white covering, no matter where I point, is called the bony labyrinth. Now imagine if I had a tube... And within that tube, I had another tube. So if you look at my hand like this, if I put this stick in there, I would have a tube inside of a tube. Well, the outer tube is the bony labyrinth. The inner tube is called the membranous labyrinth. And that's this blue structure here, this blue covering. They're called a labyrinth because they're like a maze or a labyrinth that you could get lost in. And one is hard, made out of bone. The other one's soft, made out of a membranous tissue. So this is all membranous labyrinth. Between the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth, you see this pink fluid here and here. That is called perilymph. Okay, all of this pink fluid that circulates in between the bone and the membranous labyrinth. And by the way, this membranous labyrinth will follow along inside the cochlea and coil up inside there too. It goes throughout all of this. So, bony labyrinth, the outer white covering, the blue lining or the blue structure is called the membranous labyrinth. And this pink fluid would be called perilymph. If I could cut the membranous labyrinth open, there would be a fluid inside of it called endolymph. Now, um, within the vestibule, these two enlarged pockets right here, this one is called the utricle, and this one is called the saccule. I'm going to rotate the model so we can see them from a different angle, but this would be the utricle, and this would be the saccule. And if you look at the pictures online, they're actually of a posterior view of this. So we have cochlea, we have the vestibule, and we have the three semicircular canals, anterior, lateral, posterior. This would be the bony labyrinth, the white covering, and you see the membranous labyrinth and the perilymph. The utricle and saccule and all of the membranous labyrinth has a fluid that flows inside of it called endolymph, and that endolymph is going to drain through this structure called the endolymphatic uh, duct, and there's usually a little bag-like structure. This model is missing it, we have different versions of the model. One has this yellow structure, the other one does not. But here you can see the endolymphatic duct and the endolymphatic sac. Now I'm going to go back to the other model because I really like to look at these structures here. This yellow structure here is called the cochlear nerve because it goes to the cochlea. This yellow structure here would be called the vestibular nerve because it's going to go to the vestibule. It has branches that go to each the utricle, and, the utricle and saccule, and to each of the ampullae. Okay? Now, if I take the model and I lay it on its side, or I look at it this way, there are two openings down here. Sorry. There are two openings. This opening is called the oval window, and this opening is called the round window. The oval window is oval, round window is round. Got it? And then finally, the bony labyrinth will coil up and form the cochlea on the outside 
and the membranous labyrinth follows it and snakes around inside of there. If I break it open and look at it in detail, I'll see that the perilymph, sorry, let me get this oriented correctly for you, okay? The perilymph is going to flow in this space here and this space here, and the endolymph will flow in this space. This is the inside of the membranous labyrinth. We're going to go over this structure. This model is a little bit too small to see, so we have one more model. So I'm going to stop this video. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hope you learned something, and we'll pick up with this on the next video.